So, uh, I'm Pablos, I'm a hacker and a bit of a heretic, um, which gets translated as digital security expert. Um, so, the way you guys eat today is wildly inefficient. I'll talk about Americans since I know more about that. What we do is we drive to the grocery store, fill up a cart, drive home, put it in our fridge that we paid for and pay to power. Eventually we take it out, put them in the oven, cook it, eat a little bit of it, put the leftovers in the fridge for a couple weeks before we throw them out. We're throwing all the lettuce cores and packaging in the dumpster out back, FedExing lamb bones from New Zealand. And what happens in the end is Americans end up consuming about 30% I'm sorry, about 70% of the food, the other 30% never even gets eaten. Um, what's happening is not scalable, right? We have to figure out how to feed a lot more people. Um, we have to figure out how to eat, feed them more efficiently. With population growth, that problem gets compounded by another 50%, right? We figured out how to feed 50% more people, during your lifetime, and now we get to do it again. So we're looking for ways to make that more efficient. So one of the other problems is that we don't have any data about anything you ever ate in your entire life. In every other business, we use computers to collect data, analyze the data, and use that to make better decisions. We don't know what to do with food. It's absolutely ludicrous to think that we can get by without applying computers to this problem as well. So what I'm thinking is robots should make your food. And a robot making your food would know a lot about you. It would have the data about what it made for you last time. So imagine a machine with three buttons on it what I ate yesterday, what my friends like, and I'm feeling lucky. And you push one of those buttons, and the machine has toner cartridges of frozen or dried and powdered foods. It puts down a pixel of food, hydrates it with a needle, zaps it with a laser to cook it, rinse and repeat for every pixel, and it prints you a meal. But it's a meal that's customized for you. And it avoids your allergens and dietary restrictions, injects your pharmaceuticals. And this is a meal that can be created separately for every individual. I'm at like the early 80s dot matrix stage here, so we can print smoothies and cliff bars. Probably none of you would doubt that I could print chips with mayonnaise on them, right? But give me 20 years and we'll be full color printing strawberries and French bread and steaks, right? Next slide, please. Oh, there we go. I got bored on the plane and just went nuts with the special effects in uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> so we can print, you know, Mandelbrot candied walnuts, uh, Bezier brownies. We can make new tools for chefs. We can make things that are artistic in ways that aren't possible the way that you cook now. You could download what Beyonce had last night, make a mashup with the latest Eminem track, upload it to Facebook, share it with your friends. They can print it out. But most importantly, we can turn your diet into an input-output cycle, right? We can start to correlate what you eat to health effects. And we can start to make meals that are optimized for you. I can apply Photoshop filters to your diet. So imagine you need to get off of sodium. Well, I can make 10 milligrams a day less in your meal over the course of months, and you'll never feel it happening. These are capabilities we don't have the way we prepare meals for you right now. And lastly, I can reverse engineer control groups. I can start to find the other people in the world who eat like you, who've had the same number of cheeseburgers as you, and the same number of slices of pizza with pepperoni on them and I can tell you what's gonna happen when you start drinking kale milkshakes. For a lot of us, we've, I mean, 
I know I'm in a different world here, but in America, we hardly ever even had a good tomato in my entire life. All the tomatoes I've had were not optimized for flavor and nutrition. They were optimized for shipability, even just by a farmer selecting a tomato that's likely to survive the trip to market for the last couple of hundred years. We ended up choosing um, features in our food that are not what we would want if we started from scratch. We want to optimize for nutrition and flavor. And so what I can do is take a tomato, ripen it on the vine. I'm going to you know, take that ripe tomato, flash freeze it, dry it, powder it, and preserve all the nutrients and all the flavor and get that to everyone on the planet. So anyway, trying to think about ways uh, to make food more efficient. So thank you.